Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at a fine ship book from Independence Games for Clement Sector 3rd Edition, the Atlanta class carrier. This is a this is a neat ship with a really cool concept. Author is Michael Johnson, a fine job by him, and the artists are Ian Stead for almost all of it, or for a lot of it, Michael Johnson for a lot of it, and John Watts. This was a this was a cool idea. I, I one thing I love about the Independence Games books is no matter what, you get great ideas out of them. And there you go. So we get the table of contents, which I always appreciate, a nice detailed table of contents so I can find my way around, around the book. And then I get the Atlantic class carrier. The carrier itself was conceived as a way to upgrade aging carriers and to put more vessels in them per carrier, in, in carrier, per carrier rather. So we get a look at the carrier itself, the Tomcat uh, fighter, and the Archangel anti-ship torpedo bomber. Then we get a look at the development background, and this was the part that I really enjoyed. The development background was we have an aging fleet of carriers that aren't very capable anymore by modern standards, plus the uh, carriers were built off of commercial hulls, large freighters. So let's uh, put some money in and we'll build a purpose-built ship carrier for combat. Well, Earth's various polities didn't want to go for that. It was too expensive. So they came up with a bit of a compromise, and I thought this compromise was really cool. Interestingly, the, these ships operate primarily in Earth sector after the conduit collapse, although two of them are active in Clement sector. The design is they wanted a design that would continue to stay in service and continue to grow. So what they did is they designed a ship that could be expanded upon. I thought this was an outstanding concept. It's the block concept. The idea is the ship would start out as block 1C, and it would be 2,500 ton displacement. And these are the ones that are... Oh, these are the ones that exist. Uh, I want to show the block... Here we go. Here's the block information down here. My bad. These are the ships that exist and where they are. So the Chattanooga and the Savannah are presumed lost in Clement Sector. The Atlanta, Memphis, and New Orleans have been refitted. And the Huntsville and Savannah are under construction. Final fitting out projected. So here are what is what the blocks mean. And this is the idea behind this series of ships is that as technology improves and time goes by, as the ships become a little obsolete... They go ahead and they rebuild the ship. They expand the hull. They lengthen the spine. It's just a really cool concept. Now, maybe this is something that's been done in other books or in other games or in real life. I don't know. It's the first time I've encountered this concept, and I was really excited when I started reading it. So the idea is that Block 1 would start with a 2,500-ton displacement, and the hull and fit-out as constructed... Increase in space and drive displacement, increase in hangar space. Oh, I'm sorry. Then block two goes to 3,000 ton displacement, and you increase in hull and drive displacement. Increase hangar space to include additional fighter squadron, accommodation space for additional crew, addition of defensible mag screen, and increase in defensive armament. And then block three, 3,800 displacement tons. Increase in hull and drive displacement. Increase in maximum normal space thrust. Strengthening of defensive mag screen. Increasing hangar space to include an additional fighter squadron. Accommodation space for additional crew and increase in defensive armament. And then the final exp expression of this would be block 4. 4,500 4, ton displacement. And keep in mind in Clement sector, ships that have Zim drive can only go up to 5,000 ton displacement to be able to use the Zim drive. Uh, but 4,500 tons, officially unspecified. However, it's likely that more hangar space will be added to maximize total fighter complement at six squadrons. It would be 72 fighters. A mason screen installed, more point defense capability added, uh, and accommodation for additional crew. This was what really grabbed me about this book. The idea of building something purpose-built that is designed to improve and increase in size as time goes by. I just thought that was a really neat idea. Now, the rest of the book spends a lot of time 
showing us how to grow these. We get the specifications, the engineering, the command, and everything. And it is a flagship, so it's equipped with a full command bridge and a combat, inform combat information center, uh, which is really good. And then we get a look at ship size comparison. This would be a Block 3 Atlanta. Now, the one thing that the, the book says is that even though the ship is being increased and possibly its spine lengthened to go along with that size increase, it's still structurally solid as if it were built that way. I thought that was kind of neat too. So that, all that's built into the design of the ship. We get a nice look at the internal components, the flight operations deck, the flight and recovery decks, and then some beautiful top-down deck plans. This was just such a, a fun thing to read. Uh, ship's fast launch, we get a look at that, plus the deck plan. Always like the ancillary ships. The ship's boat utility craft with its specs. The Atlanta Consolidated F-40 Tomcat Space Superiority Fighter. There you go. You get a nice look at a good fighter. And then we get the 40B, the 40A, 44A Archangel Anti-Ship Torpedo Bomber. Right there. And then some more fine deck or looks at the ship, not deck plans, but nice looks at the ship. Love that picture. And then some more looks at the ship. And these are the different ships out there uh, with their names on the hull. I just, this was so much fun to read. Um, hidden crew strength tables. And this shows the block one, block two, block three, how they would be hit. Block fours have not been built yet. They are still, still theoretical. So the book does not cover a block four. That would be the largest size of the ship. Right now they're up to block three. But we get the crew strength and damage. I just, I thought this was just so well done. Just so much information. What a cool concept to be able to custom build and custom increase the size of your vessel. And what happens with you as the players, as you're playing along, when the ship is more capable or less capable, depending on which block you're in. And then we get a nice look at a block 3A. So this would be the third iteration of it, third of four. And all the crew accommodations, the small craft, the software. Beautiful deck plans. This is a big, big ship. Just really nice. This is exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for in a ship book. I want nice ideas. I want good deck plans and logic. There's a good logic and reasoning behind the laying down and design of this particular ship, the ship class. And it is a designated car carrier, as I said. And then we got Appendix 1, which has small wep craft weapons, small craft missiles, small craft rapid fire rail guns, some more beautiful artwork, small craft lasers, small craft particle beams, and a note about anti personnel weapon damage. And then we end on Appendix 2, Weapon Range Band Comparisons for your space combat needs, and then the legalese, and we're out. There's the back of the book. This is available on Independence Games' website, or it's available through DriveThruRPG. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to both. You can get it as PDF or uh, hard print. I want to thank the folks at Independence Games for sending this my way. I completely enjoyed my read of this. I, I read it last night and just really enjoyed myself this is this is the kind of stuff that i like reading a lot of cepheus products for is ideas 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 that's what gaming is all about so that's it just a nice look at a, a very fun book i'm very happy to have this in my library and i recommend it completely so thank you to independence games for sending it my way and thank you for watching. Please take a look at the Patreon. See if you can help out there. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And I'll see you next time on page 121.